Well, it's the Daily Horizon View Show. Hi guys, it's the 25th of the 10th. We'll be looking at our top fives, uh, covering off on the exchange trade of funds on the Australian Stock Exchange. Today's spotlight is ETPMPT. That is the ETF Securities Physical uh, Palladium ETC. That is Exchange Traded Commodities. We are here to crack your financial sky. We want to give you information and demystify the world of finances. Okay, friends, let's uh, dive on into the top five ETFs by percentage rise today. We see ETPMPT, QCB, ETPMAG, ETPMPM, and HACK. So if, not sure if you know your codes, but we're looking uh, at three out of five uh, ETFs there. Uh, all metals, all metals related. So ETPM um, PT, which is our spotlight. If you want to check that out straight away, slip on through to the end of the video. It's an interesting little look at um, metals uh, in general and also platinum. Sorry, yeah, platinum. Uh, so the ETFs, the physical um, platinum, uh, ETC is backed by physical allocated um, platinum held in the HSBC bank in the US of A. Uh, that one has a market cap of roughly $5.6 million. We saw a rise today of 3.1%, which equates to $3.84 on a pretty low volume, uh, 29 shares traded. Um, pretty much this one is quite and a liquid ETF due to its size. Top five ETFs by percentage falls. Bear in the number one spot there. IHCB, IHHY, at food, and uh, last but not least here, IHOO. Uh, for those who may have forgotten, Bear is the Beta Shares Australia Equities Bear Hedge Fund uh, that generates returns negatively correlated to the returns on the ASX. So pretty much if the shares are going up, that one should be going down. If it's, and if ASX is going down, that one should be going up. So that, that's kind of um, inverse of uh, the share market. That one has a market cap of $56.3 million. We saw a fall today of 0.75%, which equates to nine cents. Not a great deal of movement on that one. Uh, reasonable volume. Uh, 1,100 shares traded. Uh, let's take a look at the top five ETFs by a dollar rise. ETPMPT, no surprise there. SPY, ETPMPM, Gold, and, and IVV. So for the last few screens, we've seen um, a pretty much uh, focus or a bias towards metals. Uh, we saw ETPMPT rose, as we mentioned before, $3.84, 29 shares traded. Not much to really see there, nothing to write home about. Top five ETFs by uh, Dollar Falls. What is on the downside here? IHCB, IHHY, IHVV, IHOO, and BEAR. We saw IHCB, uh, that is the iShares Core Global Corporate Bond, um, Australian Dollar Hedge. That one invests in fixed rate bonds issued by corporations in emergency, emerging and developing markets, I should say. That one has a market cap of roughly $190 million. The dividend is roughly 2.79%. Morningstar give that one a rating of a bronze. Uh, today we saw a fall of 44 cents uh, or 0.4 percent on reasonable volume, I suppose, 4,800 shares traded. Top five ETS by number of trades, getting to nitty gritty now. VAP, number one there, VAS, Gold, STW followed up there and rounding out our top five is IOO. So for those who've forgotten, VAP is probably one of the better 
ETFs listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. That is the Vanguard Property um, Securities Index ETF. That one has a market cap of roughly $1.3 billion, dividend yield roughly 5%. Morningstar have a, well, the highest rating on it, I should say, which is gold. Uh, that effectively is five stars out of five. Uh, we saw today 351 trades, quite healthy, predominantly on the upside or majority on the upside because the share price Closed out uh, at 69 cents uh, up or a rise of 0.75%. Top five ETS by volume, I-T-H-I, I-O-Z, AAA, S-T-W and V-A-S. So ETHI is um, relatively new but also becoming quite popular in the last few months. So ETHI is the BetaShares Global Sustainability Leaders ETF. Uh, that one tracks the NASDAQ uh, Future Global Sustainability Leaders Index, has a market cap of roughly $404 million. So it's quite large. That one, uh, dividend yield is quite small, roughly 1.6%. Morningstar uh, give this one a, a neutral uh, rating. Uh, we're seeing a volume here of 400 and sorry, 481,600 shares. If I can get my brain clicked into gear on that one and get the words out of my damn mouth. On the upside, we saw an increase in share price of 11 cents, which equates to 1.23%. Top five ETFs by value, you should see the usual suspects as always, VS, AAA, VAP, IOZ, and STW rounds at the top five. Uh, VAS, for those who have forgotten, is the Vanguard Australia Share uh, Index ETF, and that one tracks the S&P ASX 300. That one has a market cap of roughly $4.2 billion, one of the bigger ETFs on the Australian market. You get a dividend yield of roughly 4%. Morningstar give that ETF a bronze rating. So if you want to think of that as in the stars, that is three out of five stars. We saw a total value of trades go through today of 7 million, which is actually quite small. Um, not an overly exciting day today. Market uh, volume is down a bit. Um, but we saw a VAS on the upside because we saw an increase uh, in the share price of 57 cents, which equates to 0.67 of a percent. Okay, guys, as we mentioned previously, the spotlight is ETPMPT, and that is ETF Securities Physical Platinum ETC. Uh, the ETF is designed to offer investors simple, cost efficient and secure way to access Platinum by providing the return equivalent in the momentum or movements in the Platinum spot price, less the applicable management fee, which we'll have a look at later. So this ETF is backed by physical physically allocated Platinum held by HSBC Bank, uh, they're also known as custodian. Only metal that uh, conforms with the London Platinum and Palladium Association's rules for good delivery can be accepted by the custodian. Each physical bar is segregated, individually identified and allocated, so you can walk up and get your bar or you know your coin or whatever, um, or however much you own, I suppose. Why would we bother? So precious metals are often uncorrelated with other asset classes and can be used to improve portfolio risk return characteristics uh, and to hedge against event risk. So like I was saying before, people ducking for cover hiding because they're worried about some cataclysm in the economy. Platinum prices have fallen in recent years as automotive demand has softened. However, applications in the technology and medical sectors are growing. So uh, as we'll, I'm not sure if it's on the next slide, but we kind of look at that later. Uh, ETPMPT holds uh, allocated platinum within the HSBC Bank in London. Uh, this vault is audited twice a year. 
uh, to ensure that the uh, boolean meets the required specifications. Well, hopefully it's audited to make sure it's bloody there. That's more to the point. Looking at a net asset value of $128.82, trading just below that at $127.74. Market cap of 5.6 million, management cost of 0.49%. Platinum tends to be a little higher in price than gold during routine periods of market and political instability, simply because uh, it's not, of, not as much of it to go around. So the greatest demand for platinum comes from automotive catalysts, which are used to reduce the harmfulness of emissions. So pretty much it's used in the exhaust systems of cars. And then you're looking at, uh, you know, jewelry um, fabrication, so rings and whatever else, necklaces and that type of stuff. Because uh, the auto industry's heavy uh, reliance on the metal, platinum prices are Determined in large part by auto sales, so car sales and production numbers. So that can give you a bit of a feel if you're looking at um, buying uh, some uh, platinum ETFs or platinum metal uh, directly. Uh, have a look at the uh, car sales. I can give you an idea of the price, uh, what the trajectory is. Platinum mines are heavily concentrated in only two countries. So the main production comes from South Africa and Russia. Uh, this creates greater potential for a cartel-like uh, environment to form that would support, uh, you know, or prop up an artificial price um, rise in platinum. Um, you know, quite possibly having some direct exposure to precious metals may uh, be a good idea, uh, as they tend to be uncorrelated, as we touched on briefly before. Uh, yeah, like I say, to uncorrelated to most other assets, and um, that may help, re you know, reduce some risk or you know volatility uh, in your portfolio. Do I have a lot of gold in my portfolio? The answer is no. Don't don't really have any exposure to it at all. You know, I mean, I we kind of touched on my attitude to gold previously, but it's not something that I, I um, really thinks. A great investment you know you look at guys like um, Robert Kiyosaki he loves gold you know because of the security things it, it brings him but you know I think that the marginal amount of security it brings you you, you sort of if you're investing in gold as opposed to putting your money in real estate or stocks or whatever you want to put it in you don't get that um, dividend yield or you don't get the rental income um, from say say gold or some of these other precious metals, they're just a piece of metal. They don't really produce anything. Uh, the chart for this ETF or platinum in general just doesn't look too exciting to me. You've got most of your growth, big losses early on in the life lifespan of this ETF, but you kind of picked up a bit up in the last um, 12 months um, to two years type thing. Um, your one year returns are just under 16% and that's where you, most of your gains have come from. Um, like I say, I, I, you know, uh, it's not really something I'd be hugely excited to own. Um, just for the sheer fact that you can look at it, I suppose, and touch it. But other than that, it's not something I'd be particularly uh, crazy about running out and loading up on. G'day Valueholics. So just a quick reminder, the principal purpose of this post is to provide factual information and not provide financial product advice. Additionally, the information provided is not intended to provide any recommendation or opinion about any financial product. So what I'm saying is here, I don't understand your financial situation. And if you are unsure about your own personal finances, listen along to my videos a bit more, but it's always up to you guys, and if you need additional help, you should seek advice from a financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, this is just what I do in my spare time. I research, I look at these things, and try to educate myself so I can make these decisions uh, for myself effectively. So if you're not that confident yet, you definitely make sure you need to get some additional advice from a licensed financial provider.
Thanks for hanging around to the end of the video, Veoholics. So my mission is to give you guys the tools, knowledge and confidence uh, to go out there and take control of your own finances. I want to crack your financial sky. I think we can do that together. So we want to educate you guys, build your confidence. And most of all, just want to have a bit of fun because these things can actually be fun. So learning about your finances, uh, can be quite rewarding. Uh, yeah, I, I actually quite enjoy what I do. Um, it's a pleasure to bring it to you. So if you've got some sp a spare second, give us a thumbs up or subscribe even, because that'd be fantastic to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And uh, Pretty much primarily, um, you know, even if you don't do that, I just want to make sure I'm um, giving you guys some value. So have a great day, guys. Uh, invest on.